this video a breakthrough study just changed everything we knew about protein and kidney disease. With this simple intervention, the progression of kidney disease was slowed down by five times. Scientists are calling this innovative approach the keto diet. Catherine here, I'm a doctor of natural medicine and today I'm questioning every life choice I've ever made. Yes, it's not every day that I get to talk about breakthroughs like those we are discussing today. Guys, this will change how I personally prescribe renal diets. Gone are the times of me recommending quinoa salads and broccoli stews because here's the thing. Thanks to this innovative approach that we are going to see today, patients were able to slow down CKD progression by five times, as we have seen, and to decrease their proteinuria by three times. To achieve this, researchers decided to completely disregard current guidelines for nutrition in CKD patients. They went completely rug and prescribed a diet so radical it made the actual keto diet look like a government approved food pyramid. And here's the incredible part. Instead of losing their licenses, these researchers were able to publish a paper that basically says, no, you are wrong. So yeah, kudos to them for opening everyone's eyes about the renal diet. Now, we will see immediately what changed also from a practical point of view with info you can use to improve your actual diet. Before that, don't forget to like and subscribe. Because now the question is, are we prescribing the right amount of protein to CKD patients? Now guys, I won't turn this video into a boring lecture about the renal diet, I promise. But there is one thing you need to keep in mind in order to understand how big of a change we are seeing today in the world of CKD. What I need to show you is the amount of protein that's currently recommended to CKD patients. So we have three levels of daily protein intake you may be recommended. Patients in dialysis are recommended more protein than anyone else, 1 to 1.2 grams per kilogram of ideal body weight per day. To achieve this amount of daily protein, I usually prescribe plant-based diets with the addition of a few low phosphorus animal-based protein sources, such as egg whites, maybe some chicken breast and some white fish. Yeah. Dialysis patients get more protein because dialysis itself clears nitrogen waste. Now, diabetes patients are in the middle here, but they don't get any animal-based foods. No white fish, no eggs, with a goal of 0.6 to 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram. You will not only have to follow a plant-based diet, you will also need to cut legumes, seeds, nuts, and other sources of plant-based protein. And of course, CKD patients that are not on dialysis and that don't have diabetes get even less protein. Staying below 0.6 grams of protein per kilogram means being incredibly careful with what you eat. So if you don't have diabetes and you are not on dialysis, you won't just have to follow a plant-based diet to limit legumes and nuts. You will also need to replace some of your grains with special medical foods made for CKD patients. But guys, this is all going to change. A lot of new research is popping out about the renal diet and soon, these recommendations are going to change. So let's talk about what's probably the most significant study on the renal diet of 2025. So here's the deal. Researchers were able to prove that with an innovative approach, they can get CKD patients to achieve a significant improvement in GFR numbers and in creatinine levels. And I mean, patients in all the stages, including patients with diabetes. And guys, what makes this extremely relevant is the fact that this meta-analysis was conducted on 1,596 patients with CKD of all kinds. 
So patients with and without diabetes in all the stages of CKD were included in the meta-analysis. Right, but what is this incredible new approach, you ask? Well, what they reviewed here is the use of the quote-unquote keto diet in these 1,596 CKD patients. So half of the patients in the meta-analysis were following the current treatment standard for the diet and the other half was on the keto diet. But please, don't worry when I say keto diet. These researchers didn't just send 797 poor souls into dialysis. No. For some reason, what they refer to as a keto diet is in fact a very low protein diet supplemented with keto analogs. So, do you remember what I was saying about CKD patients with diabetes having to cut protein to a certain extent and those without it to remove even more protein? Well, you can throw all that in the trash now. We don't need those old recommendations anymore. Nope. We have the keto diet now. And you see, what they use in this study, the so-called keto diet, is a diet so low in protein that even thinking about steak will be considered a cheat meal. Yeah, the new keto just dropped and it's incredibly extreme, but it works. It can delay dialysis by years. It can slow down CKD progression by five times. But why are they calling it the keto diet, you ask? Well, I usually refer to this experimental approach as the supplemented very low protein diet, SVLPD in short. But I guess keto diet sounds better. Or maybe these researchers, they just reached that level of fame where you can name your kid Apple or XHarsha12 and everyone just nods politely. Oh, you're calling a very low protein diet keto? Sure, Dr. Prestigious, and I'm calling my Honda Civic a Lamborghini from now on. I mean, this is peak, I have tenure, energy. Anyway, guys, the message here is pretty clear. Here's what the researchers wrote. The absence of an appropriate low-protein diet, LPD, in individuals with CKD may lead to end-stage renal disease. And yeah, they are really saying that. What this means, translated in layman's words, is basically, Hey Jack, put down that steak now or I'll stick a fistula in your arm faster than you can say Davida. Final warning. So yeah, if this is not clear yet, in the span of just a few years, we went from the casual, maybe dial back the red meat for CKD to nuclear lever anti-protein intervention. I mean... I've been reading scientific literature for longer than I can remember and this is the first time in my life I read a study literally threatening the patients. Next thing you know, they'll have protein sniffing dogs at your doctor's office and a SWAT team for people caught hiding beef jerky. In short, large meat analysis prove that if you have CKD, even if diabetes is also present, you have to eat less protein per day than a vegan rabbit, unless, of course, you want to end up in dialysis. And we will see what foods are safe according to these new standards in a moment. All right, guys, full disclosure, this new research felt like someone dumped a bucket of ice water on my head while yelling, surprise, Catherine, turns out you're not harsh enough when taking grandma's favorite soup away. Apparently, these researchers think I've been playing it way too soft. Forget gently recommending quinoa salads. I should have been smacking those burgers right out of people's hands all along. Maybe they're right. Maybe if I'd been more strict, fewer patients will even come closer to dialysis. Now, guys, I'm not sure if I should go full Surgeon Hartman on my patients. What is that? What the f*** is that? Open your mouth! Don't tell anyone, but I'm not following the old rules either. My method is a bit different and, well, it works. 
I always try to start patients on a renal diet gradually because you see, yelling at patients until they give up everything is not exactly my style. I prefer a more gradual approach. I prefer to have my patients cutting protein as much as reasonably possible at first, but without going completely nuclear on their diet. This way, I get them to see that even a small step in the right direction can achieve an improvement in their kidney function. And that's a lot more important than people realize. Why? Because it works. I've seen firsthand that even small manageable steps toward reducing protein can significantly improve kidney function. And trust me, seeing those numbers improve even a little is way more motivating than any drill surgeon style lecture I could ever deliver. But hey, next time another study like this one comes along, who knows, I might snap and go full surgeon Hartman on you. What is that? I mean, no kidney left behind, right? Alright, jokes aside, if you're fed up with confusing outdated advice or doctors whose medical textbooks came out before color TV, I can help. I offer personalized one-on-one consultations designed specifically around your labs, symptoms, and CKD stage. My goal, making sure you get the fastest, safest improvements possible without unnecessary stress. And yes, each consultation includes a tailored renal diet backed by real science and proven results. If you're ready to see real improvement, email me at katherine at newhopeforkinnypatients.com or click the link in the description. I promise I won't go full surgeon Hartman on you. Probably. What is that? What the f*** is that? Open your mouth! Okay guys, now that we have examined the science, the big question is, how do we put this into practice? How do we get from a regular low protein diet to a very low protein diet? And yes, this section is specifically for people already on the right track who want to level up their kidney numbers even further. Because, I mean, at this point, if you're still regularly eating animal protein, Why you little maggot? You make me want to vomit! Alright, let's get practical now. Our goal is simple, cut protein intake as much as humanly possible and then cut it a little bit more because the alternative and stage renal disease, dialysis. Yeah, dialysis. And trust me, dialysis is about as fun as watching paint dry in slow motion. So here are some exceptionally healthy choices that work for each and every single CKD patient, including those with diabetes. And they have some serious health benefits that go beyond reducing protein intake. So consider taking a screenshot right now. Some of the foods you want to eat every day include cucumber, literally crunchy water, zero carbs, zero protein, low potassium, just fiber to keep you full. It's underrated like the quiet kid in school who ends up a billionaire. Celery, another low calorie entry, this one with mild diuretic properties, great for flushing toxins out. Eggplant, this is a veggie I always recommend. It's full of powerful antioxidants to protect your kidneys. And let's talk about starchy root veggies. Did someone tell you to avoid starchy veggies? Wrong! Meat jicama, basically a sweeter, juicier potato with lower potassium and fewer carbs. Available in Mexican and Asian markets like potatoes, but healthier. And of course, we can't forget to mention berries, strawberries and blueberries in particular. Packed with antioxidants, these little gems protect your kidneys better than your insurance policy. So if your goal is reducing protein intake, and it should totally be, these foods can help you. And they are also safe for diabetes patients. But as I was saying, also patients that do not have diabetes are supposed to change the way they eat. The goal is getting as little protein as possible each and every day. So question, if you are already following a plant-based diet and that last time you saw what's inside an egg was in 2011, How are you even supposed to reduce protein even further? Well, by making a few smart food choices. Let's take a look at my table now. And please don't space out right now. Don't force me to go full Surgeon Hartman now. What is that? What the f*** is that? Open your mouth! 
Good. Now that you are back on the left, you will see some plant-based foods that, despite being generally healthy, are comparatively rich in protein. And on the right, you will find alternatives that are much lower in protein. They're basically your kidney's dream foods. I'll give you a few examples, but you can also, you know, take a screenshot of this table and put it on your fridge. Now, a food replacement that makes a lot of sense is avoiding legumes and replacing them with green beans. If you eat legumes regularly, which I don't recommend, you may be getting a lot of protein from them. No good. Same for milk alternatives. Milk alternatives are not bad in general, but soy and nut milk in particular are pretty rich in protein. You can get more than 5 grams of protein from one cup, and that's not compatible with a very low protein diet. Prefer rice milk. What about whole grains, you ask? They are super healthy and I still recommend them despite some whole grains being relatively high in protein. But if the goal is a very low protein diet, prefer brown rice instead. Mushrooms, if you eat mushrooms, prefer shirataki mushrooms. They are not just super healthy, they also are lower in protein than average. Now, one of the favorite tricks of researchers and doctors to get their patients to actually follow a VLPD are upper tech food items. We are talking about, you know, your regular pasta, bread, even biscuits, if you are underweight but with zero protein. These are medicinal foods made for kidney patients and they can really help with patients that are struggling to get enough calories every day. Now a trick for those of you that want to cut both caloric intake and protein, try shirataki noodles. This is a type of pasta that's made from the konjac root. It's a lot less processed than apartheid pasta, but it also has way less calories, almost no calories actually, and almost no protein as well. Amazing for those that need to lose weight. Okay, now at this point many people ask, but Catherine, don't we need protein in order to survive? Well guys, no, not at all. You need to cut protein if you want to live longer, says science. I mean, as long as you take those keto supplements I mentioned in the beginning of the video. If you remember the study we are examining earlier, you may have noticed that these patients were also being prescribed a special supplement with their keto diet, keto analogs, hence the name keto diet. Now, Keto Analogs, this supplement is extremely effective at replacing the protein you are missing from the diet. It's basically a supplement of all the good stuff you get from protein with none of the kidney destroying toxins. And yeah, that's part of the reason why we can tell patients that they don't need protein anymore today, which is awesome. I mean, I have a lot of patients that have been told by misinformed people that they are never going to survive without protein, right? Have you ever been told something like that? Because some people are convinced this is true and they can become very argumentative sometimes. They ask, but how can the body repair itself without protein? And also, but how will I keep my muscles without protein? And sometimes, but how can I blame all my life's problems on not enough protein instead of my actual bad habits without protein? And yeah, now I have an ace up my sleeve that wins each and every of these arguments instantly, guys. Keto analogs. You are worried about muscles? Keto analogs. You are worried about survival? Keto analogs. Your doctor born in 1937 still thinks the food pyramid is gospel? Keto analogs. So yeah, imagine how much I love these little pills. Now, this supplement only has just one tiny little problem. Keto analog supplements are almost as expensive as your mortgage and if you are outside the US or India, they are harder to find than literal unicorn tears. That's why I recently made a video about an alternative to them, a supplement that's as cheap as cat food and that has most of the benefits of keto analogs. If you want to know more, my video appears for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.